Crazy had some juicy quotes today at his combine press conference, and we have some thoughts. With the NFL scouting combine kicking off this week, uh, obviously we this is when we finally start to get a little bit of news regarding the NFL. Uh, obviously, GMs have press conferences, a lot of like radio interviews with with members of teams by different by different uh, different media outlets. Um, a lot of you know sometimes some uh, negotiation goes on here between uh, G, with uh, between GMs and players. But you know today we wanted to focus on Quasi Adolfo Mensa and yep. his comments that he had uh, regarding a couple things that. Has been on the on the on the minds of Vikings fans pretty much since the season ended. Uh, you know, talked about. You know, obviously we'll we'll get into a lot of the stuff he talks about, but a lot of it is player based and some coaching stuff. And mm-hmm. He has some really really interesting things to say. Again, it's GM speak. Right, right, right. What but we really take from you these? know not a whole lot, but still, it's there's some things in there that you know you could interpret one way or another. And I would say, uh, you know, so far with these kind of cryptic GM words that you're talking about. Um, I think we did a pretty good job at deciphering it the first time right after the season when Ed Donatel was getting fired. So again, even with that, I said we're going to put our Sherlock hats on. I think uh, we're going to do that again and see if we can read between the lines and get our guess of what he means by uh, by what he says in this. And then other than that, though, I want to uh, just appreciate everybody for watching us. You know, we've been diving into our live stream and it's starting to grow every week. So we appreciate it big time. Um, for anyone that's new to our channel, I, I want you guys to go jump in there because we don't just give information, have a good time. We also give away Justin Jefferson rookie cards. Um, and then also all we ask is for a subscribe and for you to press that bell, get notifications for our videos and our live videos so you can join them and have a chance at winning this. Because yeah. Justin so, yeah, Jefferson rookie cards cost money. And the only way to get money on YouTube <laughs> is getting a thousand subscribers. And we're not there yet. So, But we're getting there. We're sure. getting there. We're working away. And you anyway, can help. We anyway, let's it. jump in. First thing, biggest thing on everybody's minds when it comes to this offseason. Well, the second biggest thing on the mind. Maybe we'll get into yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah. Anyway. This is like on everyone's mind, but it's we... It's just a no-brainer. You just got to make this right. work. Um, yep. So it's kind of like that. But yeah, jump into yeah. the what he says on this. So uh, on a, on the Justin when he asked about the Justin Jefferson uh, potential extension, uh, obviously. So we have some quotes here, kind of long worded, but we're gonna go through them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said it earlier. I don't want to be the Vikings GM without that guy in our building. So it's high priority. Duh. Uh, we make sure uh, we got to make sure that we do it in, in an order that we can give it or make in it in the order that we can do it in given all our all of the other decisions we have to make. Right, and right, the biggest right. thing, you know, and this this one here just speaks to the character of Justin Jefferson. Uh, he's trying to put the Minnesota Vikings on his back. He wants to win a championship. When you have people like that in your building, uh, you try everything you can to not let them out. Yes. Uh, big credit to Will Raggetts. Uh, we read through his article to get a lot of these quotes. So uh, credit to him. Go check out his article if you want on Sports Illustrated. Um, but obviously the first couple comments, like, no, duh, Justin Jefferson, probably the most exciting player in the league right now. Is you do anything you can you can do to lock him up. But that but that last comment, and this has kind of been something that people have been saying about Justin Jefferson since he was drafted. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quazy said when he first met him, you know, he was kind of joking around about the wide receiver contracts. He said, you know, I don't think you're gonna have an issue about money. And he said Justin Jefferson's kind of straight face, said, I just want to win a Super right. Bowl. Like and that's that those are the type of players you want on your team. Yeah, those are absolutely the players, especially if that's their number one priority, especially a guy like Justin Jefferson that's coming to the league so young. And he's hungry, man. I mean, he has that chip on his shoulder. Um, He wasn't very highly recruited out of high school or anything like that. So, you know, he's he's in it for the football, for the game. Um, Yeah, man. I mean, this is a no brainer. Obviously, you know, he talks about needing to figure out some other decisions. That's because we're we're not in a cap we're not at the cap situation where we can give Justin his extension yet we have to go through other players and kind of create that room for Justin Jefferson but like we said in the first uh in the first press conference after the season you know Quezzy said said it it's not about like are we gonna sign Ju- or get give Justin Jefferson an extension or not it's more of like it's already start time time to already start popping the champagne because we are going to extend them. Uh, he's literally the best one. Of the, he's arguably the best player in this entire league outside of quarterbacks. Um, and, you know, obviously you got to make sure you keep that person on your team. Long Absolutely. Well, and Justin Jefferson, like, yeah, he doesn't need to talk about the money because he knows damn well he's getting it. So wanting to win, yeah. is just, you know, but still it, it's, it's, this is what you want from your star players. You want a guy that's, and that's why it's going to be so hard to potentially move on from a quarterback like Kirk cousins, because, 
Kirk oh, wait, Cousins, wait, wait, wait. before you dive through. too far in, Kirk Cousins, a guy that there is some questions if if he cares more about winning a Super Bowl compared to money, um, which I have to just bring that up before we dive into this. It's a legitimate question. It's a legitimate yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. But like, obviously, like I like Kirk Cousins. He, he, there's a chance you really, you can get your bag and you can really want a championship, but you can definitely say like, ah, uh, he, you know, the money part might be a little bit more, if it came down to choosing one or the other, he probably takes the money. Yeah. Obviously. Maybe. I mean, maybe, but yeah, <laughs> it seems that way throughout his career for sure. Yeah, uh, but anyway, but Kirk Cousins definitely gives his best chance, this team, the best chance to win. And when you're signing Justin Jefferson, he's going to, he's going to ask like, what's the future? Like. Is Kirk mm-hmm. going to be here? Are you guys going to draft? Like he's going to he's going to want to know this stuff before he signs an extension. Being right. the, t- the caliber of player that he is, I think he has earned that. But anyway, uh, obviously, with the Kirk Cousins news yesterday, of course we knew Quazi was going to ask, be asked this question, uh, and he did what you would expect him to do. He said he, he went full numbers. He said he talked about uh, again a lot of words, but we'll go through them. Uh, talk about necessary and sufficient conditions in math. Uh, necessary condition is having a starting level quarterback, and we all know that. Like we every. That's why the quarterback position is the most important position in team sports. That's why people overpay for quarterbacks. That's why right. people overdraft quarterbacks because you need the right quarterback. And you got, and it's not just the right, a quarterback. You need a quarterback that's starting level. And he's, as, as he said, as he goes on to say, uh, meets a certain threshold. Uh, he said, now, you know, having that quarterback doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. As you see with a lot of quarterbacks that are mm-hmm. drafted, like they're starting caliber, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to win just because of the quarterback. There's a, there's a select few that are like that. He said, but you definitely do need one. Uh, but right, it's one of the things right. you need. So he said, so having a good quarterback is necessary condition. He said, Kirk Cousins, and we all know that Kirk Cousins meets the thresh- threshold. He is good enough yeah. to keep you competitive. Definitely, so, and he said, and now how do you build the rest of the team around him? And uh, I believe he also said that he said, there's a lot of teams out there that like, they can't say that we have the quarterback. Now we need to build around him. He said, it, it is a nice thing to have. Um, you right, know, right, right. Goes on to say, you know, um, uh, he goes on to talk about potentially, you know, do you, uh, different quarterbacks and these things around them obviously meets the threshold. Then he said, and then he goes into how long, how long does a guy like this meet the threshold, which this is where it starts to the delve more into like, do we have the guy, but for how much longer, you know? And that's yeah, kind of what yeah, I yeah. From, from at least. And is it, and mentioned. is he for sure that guy, not just to be competitive, but the guy to win a Super Bowl. Um, and you have to keep that in head too. like for the rest of his career. Can he do that? If we signed him to that three year extension, what's his window look like? Maybe we have one more shot next year when he's 36 after that, he's 37. Like, is it worth keeping around? Do you think he is that guy that puts us in a position to win a super Bowl a hundred percent next year? Right. Um, and then obviously, you know, he does talk about building the team around him and that's why a rookie, you know, they always say the quarterback on the rookie contract is the biggest competitive advantage you can have because the right. quarterback, as we talked about, they get overpaid. They do, t- they do take up so much of that salary cap. Mm-hmm. That you do need to be creative when building a team. And Quazy did mention in this, like the difference between like drafting and um drafting and free agents. He said a lot of times free agents are more known. So when you bring in free agent players, they're gonna cost more because you know what they can do. And obviously see draft picks, they're new and you try to sculpt them and it's easier to keep them. Talking about you know, go back to Justin Jefferson a little bit. Uh when you when you draft a guy and grow him in your system, because then you kind of have first dibs on a extending them and be knowing what they're all about when you decide right. whether or not to extend them. So, right. and just kind of where you're at as a team, which is a big thing that goes into this. Uh, but kind of getting back to the Kirk Cousins stuff, I uh, said, you know, the threshold thing, those are the things we need to answer. Uh, you know, all good questions. Uh, he said, there's no one right, right way to do it. And he did also mention like, you know, do you, do you potentially look to maybe a, at a quarterback with different skill sets, adding a mm-hmm. player like that? And he said, that's, he said, you know, we have a lot of decisions to make and this, you know, this is kind of all one of them again. When you read through this, he he takes both sides of it. He talks yeah. about we have the right quarterback that can win, but he also says how long can this quarterback win, and can we add somebody with some different traits that helps the team building? So, right. so he it kind of he, did his, he, did the GM speak? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sides. And it, it is like obviously there's a huge difference between what you said about Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins. With Justin Jefferson, straight to the point, we want this guy, no question for for the long term, whatever. And this one is like you said, it's kind of split a little bit to the point of the idea of him letting him walk after one more year, signing him to a longer term extension. And that's, it's, it's obvious that uh, I don't think they've decided exactly what they're going to do yet, but that's kind of what I take from what he's saying is like, you know, is like, we think we can win with him, but do we think if we, if we have to sign him to a long-term extension, is it worth it? Do we think he can win for that long? So if that's not the case, if we decide, like, I don't think we want to take the chance for him for three more years, 
um, you know, we might want to find somebody else. And, you know, it does say something too about there's a chance as somebody maybe with different skill sets, which makes me, makes me think he's also interested in someone that probably, I'm assuming he's on board with all of us, someone that can escape the pocket and yeah. make moves with his, uh, avoid pressure and make moves with his arms and his legs. And of course, anybody in this league these days are going to be intrigued by that. But you can see like just that comment shows like, like there's that's in the air. There's no question. There's it's in the air that they will be hopefully uh, at least looking at some of these other quarterbacks coming into this draft and then maybe next draft. For sure. But again, interesting comments that everybody kind of like, you know, you read that you're like, yes, it all makes sense. But we, and, and obviously he's not going to tip his hand into which way he's going, but kind of taking both sides helps him, you know, because I mean, people talk about negotiating through the media you know, this is, I think this kind of lets him know, like, you know, Kirk Cousins agent is obviously listening to this and he's saying, yeah, it's like, we have a guy that meets the threshold, but for how much longer will he meet that threshold? Can you add, mm -hmm. you know, could you add somebody else with different traits? So I think in a way he's taking both sides, but also kind of saying like, there's options. We have options. Here, yeah. So. Yeah. And you're, and you are in true in or true intrigued by uh, a, a quarterback that has different traits than Kirk Cousins. For sure. But again, will we get that guy in the draft? We don't know. But yeah, we don't. That's know. that. That was kind of the take on Kirk Cousins. Though we are dropping our quarterback, our top five quarterbacks coming into this draft later this week, probably Friday, right? I would think so. Yeah. So probably be Friday that we'll be dropping, and you'll kind of get an idea of what we're looking at uh, if if we were to go grab a quarterback this year. So moving on from Kirk Cousins talk, uh, he also did uh, talk about both the Delvins on the team, which are the only two Delvins in the NFL. Will, will they be playing on the same team still? Remains to be seen. But anyway, we'll start first thing about Delvin Cook when uh, when asked about him. He said, with Delvin, starts with having a great leader, a great player and a great leader, which, you know my thoughts on Delvin Cook. As I've said, <laughs> I always think, I always, I know he's a great locker room guy. I know he's a right, leader right. in that locker Especially room. Especially like this year, it was like, all the players are talking about Delvin Cook a lot and how right, he's really sure. stepped up as a leader. Mm -hmm. The play, you know, has he lost a step? Sure, was he hurt by a probably a pretty poor interior offensive line? Uh, sure, but is that contract too much? Absolutely. And as the, the rumors are out there, he's not in taking a pay cut at this right. point. Is it just you know negotiating through the media? Is it true? Who knows? Um, but he's you know a great leader. Otherwise, we're we're just in the NFL. You know, he says they have a lot of constraints, salary cap, different things. And we're trying to figure out those things and how we can operate. Um, to me. Again, it's, he's not saying much. He didn't give a clear-cut answer, but that doesn't bode well. Uh, obviously, we all know paying running backs is one of those things that you just don't do um, with the sal, especially with the salary cap and a quarterback who has you know has taken up a sizable amount mm -hmm, of it as mm -hmm. well. So, well, without saying anything, he also didn't give him a ringing endorsement that he will yes. be next year. We're working on things. So, right, right, right. It's just like I said earlier with the Justin Jefferson thing. With Justin Jefferson, it was straight to the point. Like, there's no going around the answer at all. It's just a hundred percent. Like we're going after JJ. We're getting after Justin Jefferson. Kirk Cousins, there was a little going around the answer a little bit. This one as well. So it makes it seem pretty obvious to me. Obviously, who knows what they're going to do, but it is up in the air. And if I was going to read this and take it, I don't think they plan on bringing him back at a $14 million right. running well, back. Again, and then is this negotiating through the media? Is Quasi negotiating with his agent right now by just saying like, yeah, you know, we're kind of good with maybe moving on. Yeah. Like, is that how his Definitely. agent's going to read it? Yeah. Maybe then they work something out. Who knows? But kind of remains to be seen yeah uh, so movement... he's pretty much saying that you know his contract is a problem that's mm -hmm. what that's what i'm getting from this yeah. so they need to figure that out and if they can't it's you might have to make a, biz a business decision sure. yep and then you know we, if you want to talk about ringing an endorsement we move on to the next exactly. delvin yep. uh, when he yep. said look we love delvin same thing when you have a good player in your building and good people you want to do everything you can to keep them Obviously, we have a lot of decisions to make, so we're trying to buy ourselves a little bit more time, which was kind of the thought process when they pushed out his uh, like the, the, the cutoff to uh, is it just, what to make his salary guaranteed for this next season or something like that? I believe yeah, something um, where Delvin kind of helped they helped each other out. I think yeah, um, which well, basically, also shows like wow, it looked like a move where it's like all right, it's almost looking like we're planning on ex trying to extend Delvin right. for him to even yep. want to take the steps yeah uh, to even help us in any way. For sure, because I know he had a couple of void years or something. I think if he gets cut, the seven and a half million dead goes on our books, and I know he still gets some of that money as well. So I don't know. I again, I think you're right. This seems like two sides that are mutually interested mm -hmm. in making something happen. 
And he just, the way that he spoke about him was much more glowing than he spoke about Delvin Cook. So it was more to like, hey, we love Delvin. We don't want him to leave. Obviously, you know, I, I don't want Delvin Cook to leave. I, you're different than me, but I don't want Delvin Cook to leave. But I also understand the 14 million is a shit ton for a running back yeah, at this point. For sure. Um, so that's kind of what I think Quezzy's probably how he looks at it, where Delvin. Delvin Tomlinson, obviously you're going to have a lot more leeway in that area with this player. Mm -hmm. um, so like you said, uh, you know, it does, this looks a little bit different than it looks more towards the JJ response than it does with the Delvin or the For sure. Kirk Cousins response. Yep. yep. But of course, Delvin Tomlinson might want to come back because he has a new defensive coordinator in Brian Flores. Uh, Quasi had quite a lot to say about him. First thing he said when he was asked about the addition of Flores, I can't say enough great things about the addition. Uh, it's not just a football mind, which is special. Uh, as I talked about when we get our list together, I'm always going to be a numbers guy. So I'm always going to look at the results of his defenses. And they played a lot of good, efficient football with a lot of young players. And that's something that really drew us to him. And then when you talk about him as a leader, how passionate he is, uh, he fits so well in our culture, where our culture is positive, positively, it's passionate and fits really well into that. Mm -hmm. uh, also goes on to say he has really uh, extensive personnel background. So it's not just about the players we draft this year or free agency. It's about reshaping our vision for the roster going forward, not just to compete in today's NFL, but where it could go. Uh, what's been so great about him is specific what, what and why, what he wants and why, uh, but he also understands the market dynamic. And this is coming from a guy who obviously uh, ran Bill Belichick or helped Bill Belichick run his defense. And Bill Belichick was basically the de facto general manager of that mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. um, obviously his, his first step in the NFL was being a scout. So he understands what to look for yeah, yeah. young and up and coming players. And, and maybe that was part of the, part of the selling point here is they said, we want your opinion on some of these guys coming up through the draft process. Cause we're going to have to re we're going to have to shape, reshape this defense, which we'll get into that maybe a little bit more in the next slide. Yeah. But a lot of this is just stuff we already knew about how good of a coach he is, how well he, yeah. you know, how and, positive he is. And just the fact that he has a great background in developing players and as a scout and working with the two of the best coaches in, in the history of the NFL, that's a guy you want on a team you're looking to reshape as well as being a head coach. Um, yeah, for sure. And, and six, I mean, the last year was a successful year as a head coach. So, I mean, obviously Brian Flores brings a lot more to the table than just, just being a defensive coordinator. He definitely brings a lot more than I think Ed Donatel. Ed Donatel does not have that sim similar background. Um, but one key word in this is, young players efficient football with a lot of young players and that's something that re really drew us to him so this makes me think you know they are envisioning uh, envisioning a defense that has uh, quite a bit of young players yeah so that being said you know there's some veterans that we might not see here this year which that's kind of where i pot potentially take from that right which brings us right into the linebackers uh where we talked about the linebacker group uh, this next season and some of those young players. So we have a lot of confidence in Brian Asamoah, uh, who is also in that room. Troy Dyes are a good player. William Quenku showed some really good things on special teams. So we're going to take uh, a look like we do at every position. We have decisions to make there just like every, uh, just like everywhere, everybody else does in that spot. Uh, so looking at this, uh, one of the first things every, you know, when I, when I saw the press conference, saw people's comments on Twitter, saw people's comments on these articles, uh, Will Raggett's kind of talked about himself as well. Just saying like, there's no, and, and who knows, is he just talking about some of the young players on the roster right now? Maybe. But it is pretty glaring that he didn't mention Eric Kendricks and he didn't mention Jordan Hicks. And right, those are two right. of the guys that Hicks and Kendricks, if you just want to talk, if you want to take emotion out of it and talk about strict numbers, those are the two easiest cuts just because basically nothing dead with um, – basically nothing nothing dead with uh, Hicks if you let him go. And right. Kendricks, you look at that contract, sure, there's about $2 million dead on that deal, but you save $9.5 million. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's just, and, and his comments about the young defense and kind of, you know, just yeah. seeing how slow this defense was last year, I mean, it might have just been a minor slip. And again, maybe he was just talking about the young players, but it just doesn't necessarily bode well for Eric Kendricks being on this team next season, in my mind. And again, love Eric Kendricks. I think he's one of the, you know, better Vikings linebackers we've seen, but it might just be his time to be done here and who, unless he takes a pay cut, but we'll see. Yeah. One thing I want to go back real quick about Kirk Cousins thing is I do want to also mention that last year, their tone about Kirk Cousins was just like, he's our quarterback. He's our quarterback. So I just want to say that again, because it popped in my mind. All right. Enough Kirk Cousins talk enough Kirk Cousins. Anyways, you were correct. Um, you know, they didn't, they picked out Brian Osamoa, Troy Dye, uh, William Quinn Q. I can never say those names, but 
so it's obvious like and then the young thing like exactly what you said it just seems pretty obvious that there's a good chance that we go away from Kendricks and and Hicks Hicks is no we're definitely Hicks isn't going to be back here next year right um the the questionable one is more Eric Kendricks which like you said the contract makes sense you nine million nine and a half million there's not a single player on that defense um that saves as much cap space as is cutting Kendricks but Obviously, like I, you know, our, our my argument, some of our got arguments with Kendricks and keeping Kendricks is if we were somehow able to give him, if he was willing to take some sort of pay cut because he could potentially be better than another player, um, then going out and finding like a free agent to be around Brian Osmo. But unless we have someone that they really believe in that could start next year, which is a which from their comments here, it seems like they're going to be going more towards that. Where next year you might see. Brian Osmo is starting for sure, I'm guessing. And you might see a Troy Die or one of those guys being in that other spot. So we might be going really young at middle linebacker next mm -hmm. year. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, again, a lot of this stuff, um, he said he said a lot without saying much. But yeah, some we of just comments, try to say what we take from right. it. But we obviously, but, we could be completely but, wrong. But some of the comments were actually, you know, pretty juicy, as we said to start. You know, it's like there was, there was a lot there. And that's one thing I love about uh, Kwesi is sure he kind of gives you the runaround. But he actually does tell you things when he's giving these press conferences. So that's yeah. kind of cool. But anyway, those are our well, Before you do that, before you do that, I just, I'm going to take this whole thing, give my opinion of each section. Uh, Justin Jefferson, we're going to do whatever we can to re sign him. That's what I got from this. Kirk Cousins, I don't think they know for sure what they want to do yet, whether it's signing him long term long term or that one year extension there was a big difference between what he said about Kirk Cousins last year like I already said and JJ they didn't come out here and be like Kirk Cousins is our quarterback now in the future nothing like that um so I think that is definitely up in the air so sorry for all the people who really like Kirk Cousins like I would I would say that wasn't the most positive news for them um and then like what you said with Eric K oh Delvin Cook it does seem like they're definitely going to weigh that option I think it's going to come down to is he going to take a pay cut or not? Pay cut or cut, cut. Yeah, I, I think it's going to come. That's that's what it kind of seems for, from that. Delvin Tomlinson, it's like more towards JJ where it's like, all right, we're going to keep him here. I think they can figure out a price. I'm sure they've already talked to Delvin Tomlinson about it um, when they decided to do that deal with him earlier in the offseason. And then, yeah, the Eric Kendricks going young defense and uh, talking specifically about how how your young linebackers are, uh, you think they can step up and they're good players, is not looking great for Hicks or Kendricks. So I guess that's overall, that's kind of how we took that all in yep. uh, all together. But. Absolutely. But yeah, those are our thoughts on the press conference. We, we want to know your guys' thoughts on Quasi had to say. Drop those thoughts down in the comment section, and we'll see you guys next time on the GG Sports Podcast. Skull Vikes.